Easy to remember, right? Hey, easy to remember. Yes, sir. <laughs> Although I might have forgotten a time or two, Bobby. <laughs> Forgot mine, so hey, you know, can't get upset about that. And forget my own name. Just All right, we are on camera. Amen. So y'all catch this. Good. <laughs> we just like to talk before we get on. Good to see you tonight. Glad you're here. And uh, look forward to God speaking to our hearts. We've got seven verses tonight. And um, once again, David. Uh, going through a battle, uh, we're going to look uh, at Psalm 54, but it, we're going to actually go back into the context of where it's happening in First uh, Samuel uh, chapter 23, and uh, it's just good, it's good, good, good. The Bible's always good, amen, and uh, there are some passages oftentimes that stick out to you that uh, you might say, man, that's, you know, <laughs> whatever, a great passage of scripture, but it's all good, amen. And uh, God is good to us, and uh, we need to be a thankful people. We need to be a thankful people. Uh, we've lost that somewhere down the road, you know, of, of realizing where God has brought us from. You know, uh, he could have left us out there. You know, I think about old Hagar, you know, when she, it, it, she took Ishmael out there. And, man, God met her out there. So we're going back, and uh, God was going to watch over and take care of her. And he did. Amen. She wasn't even part of the line, folks. And, uh, but God talk, took care of her, and, and uh, amen, let's pray, and uh, pray God will help us tonight. Father, we're grateful for who you are. Father, we're, we are blessed. We're beyond blessed. Father, again, there's no, there's no reason, Father, really, that we would, uh, we know we all have um, uh, uh, certain circumstances, certain problems, certain difficulties, each one uh, unique to each other. But we have you as our God. And Father, you can sustain us. and Excuse me. You can supply our every need. And so, Father, we're dependent upon that. We're dependent tonight, Father, to be here tonight, not just as a routine or uh, just uh, something that we do, but it's something that uh, we, we really desire to hear from you, Lord. We want you to speak to our hearts, Father. We want to have an open ear to thy word. We want to trust you, God, like, like we never have before. We want you to guide us and direct us, Lord, and help our mind be stayed on thee. Thank you for the choir. Thank you for uh, Randy and Melanie and all those that sing in the choir. Thank you for the music ministry that you've given here at Faith Baptist Church. We're blessed. We're blessed. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for all the work that people do around the church and, and the different things that take place here, Father. We thank you for our seniors, Father. We we pray, God, that you continue to watch over them. Lord, we're glad to have them. And Father, we pray that we would glean wisdom from them and uh, learn from uh, them, Father. We just pray, God, uh, that you would teach us, Lord, how to, again, magnify and glorify you in a proper way. And Father, we want you to get glory. We want you to get praise. We want you to be the uh, forefront with the Lord Jesus to be high and lifted up. And Father, we just ask you again, Father, to send laborers Raise up laborers at Faith Baptist Church. We know the harvest is plenteous. Father, we know there's many people out there that the gospel needs to be shared and the, the, the seed needs to be planted and watered. Father, we pray, God, for Faith Baptist Church, Father, that you would raise up some folks, Lord, that would be a witness and a testimony. Really, Father, what we're asking you to do is to help each one of us realize that it's you that does the work through us. And Father, it's not about us. It's about you, Father, and your desire, Father. And so we pray you'd work that in our hearts and help us, God, to see the great uh, Holy Spirit, Father, speak through us as we go out into the world this week. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Please take our hymn books as a mark them down, please, and turn to page 410, standing on promises. Let's stand and sing the first, second, third, and last, please, page 410. church, oh God, we learn something about thee. Again, thank you for the privilege of being a child of God. Thank you for the things that we see going on in our world. Oh, how precious to know the Lord's coming. Thank you, Lord, that we see all these things, the signs that are coming to fulfilling. And we know, oh Lord, you said to look up for your redemption draw nigh. Bless us tonight, I pray. Give us a harvest in our heart. May we live here determined to be faithful to you, Lord Jesus Christ, above all things. Bless the message tonight. I pray for the messenger. I pray, dear God, that you would move in his heart, help him. Again, thank you for this time, for I know it's bought with the blood of the Lamb. Which in the name of Christ I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I think about how the early Christians <clears throat> used to, and I've said this to you before, how they would greet each other with shalom, and then they would say, the Lord is coming. Uh, maybe we need to start doing that, <laughs> you know, uh, we really do, uh, you know, because we need to recognize the Lord is coming, and maybe that'll help us or prod us to be witnesses of his grace and his mercy, amen, and uh, not as a, a something rote or routine or habit, but just uh, a reminder uh, to help us to focus on the Lord's coming.
ladies Bible study Thursday at 6 30 see Karen if you need to for that and then choir practice on uh, May the 19th and then also there will be a graduation service here uh, for uh, Andrew and Tyler one from high school and then one from college and uh, so uh, we will have uh, uh, some uh, refreshments in the back after that and uh, service and uh, we look forward to that and then uh, don't forget the gold offering plates are for camp and uh, for those that are going to camp and uh, appreciate your help there for that and uh, looking forward to that. I believe we're probably going to be going um, the, uh, I think it's something like the 28th or something through August the 3rd. And uh, then uh, also we're planning on having a, a vacation Bible school uh, more than likely uh, uh, not the week after we get back from camp but the next week that on the schedule and uh, prepare for that and uh, so we're excited about that and just uh, pray God and work out the details um, <clears throat> for, for those uh, particular things. Amen. Take your hand books once again please and turn to page 675. I gave my life for thee. Let's stand and sing all four verses please. Page 675. excuse, you know, not, well, God didn't tell me, you know, <laughs> are you sure about that? So anyway, we need God's leading and uh, God's direction. Pray for these families that lost loved ones, uh, Betty Manning's family and then uh, Mrs. Kip, uh, the Cantrell family, lift them up in prayer. 
I uh, mentioned the Brown family this morning. Five of these kids are in the school there with Haley, so pray for that family. Continue to pray for Jerry uh, Wilson. Continue to lift him up to the Lord in prayer. And uh, uh, continue to pray for Carol. Praise God for the good report for her. Continue to pray for Hannah and Jesse and the children there and the baby in the womb. Uh, many folks with cancer, I just pray God would, you know, touch them. It would be his will. It's difficult. It's hard. Uh, pray for Jim. Lift him up. And uh, just uh, many others that have cancer. Excuse me. Uh, any others? Yes, ma'am. I had to um, update for my former boss, Rebecca Bland, who's been fighting cancer that we've been praying for. Uh -huh. She's been dealing with a lot of weakness at home using a walker and has had in home nursing support come in. So, um, not looking very good, um, but she has a couple of new appointments. parents and then for, continue to pray for Rebecca, uh, lift her up for this cancer, <coughs> and not doing great there. Um, any other? Yes, ma'am. My mom's been uh, having a problem with her stomach all week. She's okay. had um, ulcers for years and I don't know if one of them's flared up a lot, but she's really, has really been bad on okay. a hard time this week. All right, let's pray for Betty. Lift her up in prayer. This health issue. Anybody else? Yes. Andrea. I almost forgot. Kendall called after church today, and she's going to come home tomorrow night to <clears throat> see Daddy on Tuesday. Okay. So just you know, pray for her driving through Raleigh at six o'clock. All right, let's pray for Kendall as she travels tomorrow night. Come so come home and see her, uh, Jerry. <clears throat> All right, Dalton, you pray for us, please, sir, if you would. <clears throat> that silent prayer. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, let me give you a testimony tonight as you turn your Bibles to uh, Psalm 54. Psalm 54. <clears throat> and maybe you have a testimony tonight. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I got a call uh, uh, from someone and just dealing with a situation. It's not the first time I've ever got a call like that. And uh, just uh, things going on in their lives. And uh, people response, uh, what kind of response should we have when, when somebody else does you wrong, does wrong things, don't, doesn't take the approach that you need to take. And so oftentimes, again, what I have to do is I have to leave them. Uh, I don't have to, I can leave them somewhere else, but that's not going to do any good. Uh, when, but when people uh, uh, don't do what they're supposed to do, we still need to do right. We still need to make the decisions to do the right things, regardless of how much our feelings and all these other kind of things uh, might uh, hurt, you know, and those kind of things. We still got to make sure that God help us. Now, it, it, we don't discount feelings, right? Because 
there, there are feelings involved when, when you're done wrong. You can see that here. This is an amazing passage of scripture that we're in tonight in Psalm 54. But so during choir practice, I pretty much, again, spent probably about a good 30 minutes, you know, uh, feeling like this is what God wanted me to do because it's an urgent situation. And, uh, but while that took place, I was walking back into the building after the conversation was over, and I looked on my phone, and I had a text from somebody that I taught 30 years ago, Johnny Getty. Uh, Johnny, you know, sends me some things that people send him. And um, this is what he said. I sent this back to the people that I was dealing with. And I let them know that, hey, somebody sent this to me while I was talking to you. <laughs> and this is what it says, folks. An older Christian brother shared this with me. I thought it was great, so I'm passing it along your way. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I can tell you now, I'm going to tell you, that's not the King James Version, <laughs> because I, I know that verse of Scripture. But hey, it gets the point across. The promise attached. Now, what if I, wait a minute, let's just stop right. I might just go ahead and preach right here. What, what if I would text this guy back? And say, hey, man, that wasn't the King James Version you sent me. Now, I believe folks listen. No, go out here and say, well, I just don't believe the King. I believe King James is for English-speaking people. But we, we need to understand that this gets the gist of what the King James says. <laughs> Amen. We're just crazy folks, you know. And uh, God help us. And I know this is on camera. It's okay, too. The promise attached to our attitude of prayer and thanksgiving is the peace of God. A peace that surpasses human understanding, a peace that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, this peace doesn't come from our circumstances or our ability to control them. <clears throat> That's what it says, and it's true. It comes from knowing and trusting in God's sovereignty and love. May I choose to turn to God in prayer bringing my big and little concerns to him with thanksgiving and thus experience the profound peace that only he can give a peace that transcends all understanding. <laughs> what a blessing to be able to send this back to somebody to say, hey, the timing of that is impeccable. You know why? Because God is right on time. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he knows he knows, and oh, what a blessing that you teach somebody 30-some years ago and you still can have a relationship with them all because of God. All because of God. God speaking to me about five years, maybe six, I don't even know how, you, how long ago it was, telling me this is what I needed to do, and he would make it a blessing, and he has. And so God gets the glory and the praise and the honor for what he has done and what he will continue to do. Amen. And uh, praise God. Anybody else tonight? Y'all didn't let me do all the speaking again. Come on now. Okay, Psalm 54. I'm not upset with you. <laughs> if you don't have a testimony, you don't have a testimony. You might not. Hey, God might not want you to speak. I mean, he might want me to do all the speaking tonight. Right? All right, Psalm 54. What a song. What a song we have before us. And uh, I told you wrong, Richie. It was the it was the Ziffins. The Ziffins. I think I said, I might have said Ziffins. I don't know. But anyway, uh, here, uh, the song, uh, the, the heading at the top of my song, it says, David, trust uh, in God. And uh, <clears throat> it, it, the, the psalm is written to the chief musician again. On, on the, the, the Neginoth, uh, this uh, 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 instrument, and then it's uh, also a, a, a mischel. And we've talked about that before. This is a or supposedly, again, a, a teaching song. It's not only a song to sing uh, because it's given to the choir director, but it's also a teaching. Uh, it's to be taught, and uh, that's what that word, Michelle, means. And 
It's a Psalm of David. And it tells us exactly when this took place. And, and this happened twice, by the way. Uh, it said, when the Ziphons came and said to Saul, doth not David hide himself with us? That happened twice, uh, these uh, Ziphons. And uh, uh, let me tell you a little bit about them. As you're going to see in the scriptures here, David's going to call them strangers. But the word strangers there is not uh, for uh, Gentiles. These were actual people that were out of the tribe of Judah. Same tribe David was out of. And so these were really people that uh, should be following God and trusting God, but they weren't following God and trusting God. They were actually going with Saul and trying to get David killed. And what I want you to understand, folks, listen. This is what I, I told the person I was talking to today. You'll never find in the Bible. You'll never find this in the Bible. Y'all ready? The Bible never tells us. There's only one. Well, you will find this one time in Proverbs 31 where it says that the husband can trust his wife with the finances, with the things that she was doing. It's the only time. There's never in the scriptures where the Bible says that a man and a woman should trust each other and all these other kind of things. It does not say that. The only thing it says, we need to trust God. And you trust God through them. Because why? We <clears throat> all, listen, let's just be honest. Has anybody in this room been trustworthy all their lives? No. You cannot put your trust in man. Your trust must be in God, that God's going to work through that man or that woman, that God's going to do it. And by the way, when it's done, you can trust that God did the work. Because the Bible says we were all born out of the womb speaking lies. This is the way we are. And so we need God. Amen? And so these people, again, you're going to see that when you look at 1 Samuel chapter 23, they were against David, and they were trying to get David killed. David, once again, cries out to God and has a desire for God to hear his prayer. That's very popular uh, in David's Psalms, that God would hear when you're in desperation and you're in despair, you want God, you want somebody to listen, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to learn ourselves, folks. Now, there's very few people, and we as pastors, we struggle with this too, and we have to ask God to help us with it, where... We're not the best listeners. I've told you this before. Listening is an art. Learning how to do that is very difficult, especially for a man. <laughs> because, again, he's a fixer. He, he wants to, he's automatically got an answer before you even give the question. <laughs> it's just facts. And so, you know what we need? We need God's help. Amen. We need him to help us. We need to go to God. We say, we don't just need to spout off. You got to say, God, you got to help me with this because I want to fix it. I want to make sure. I want to get it all right. Women are not like that. We're not talking about that tonight. We're talking about the Bible. <laughs> and David's trouble here that he has with somebody that he could relate to. They were, they were of the tribe of Judah. And so it's really broken down in just two sections, verses 1 through 3. You're going to see David's complaint uh, to God. And you ever complained? Anybody ever complained to God? And uh, all, we all have. And, uh, but you're going to see in verses 4 through 7, David's comfort. And I'll tell you, folks, listen, if there's anything that we need tonight, if there's anything that the people uh, are in this world need, is they need comfort. Do you realize you look around and this world is in, is in trouble? It's in trouble. Our nation is in trouble. We know that. But the church is in trouble. Do you all recognize that? There's a lot of Christian people that are in turmoil in their being, and they, they're, they're struggling, and, and what they need is they need comfort. They need comfort. And, and listen, you can only supply that, uh, you know, so much. Ultimately, our comfort needs to come from God and His Word. We just, we just read, I mean, just read, we just say, standing on the promises of God, right? Don't just sing these songs. Let's believe these things, right? Amen? And trust God. And so... I told you this morning, what a message David, David, uh, Terrell gave us in Sunday school. And, uh, oh man, fool, I gotta be careful. <laughs> the things just popped in my head. And, uh, but anyway, not about Daryl. Sorry, Daryl, what about you? <laughs> but uh, anyway, 
uh, about David and his struggles and, and, and you know, that, that, that battle, that addiction he had to self, like all of us do. And so, again, the Bible says in verse number 1 of, uh, of Psalm 54, Save me, O God. David's going to use three names for God in this passage of Scripture, and that's one of them. By thy name, and judge me by thy strength. Hear me, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. Mm -mm -mm. He uses uh, the word uh, uh, um, Elohim, and he uses the word Adonai, Lord, and, uh, mm -mm, excuse me, and then he says, for strangers, and this is the, the Zipphams, uh, are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. Selah, these are people that are not Gentiles. These are people that should know God. Amen? But they haven't set God before them. And folks, listen, when people go awry, it's because they haven't set God before them. They haven't chosen God's path. They've chosen their own. He says, Behold! Amen? What a transition. Uh, 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 Wearsby said this is the, the, the transition verse. And uh, he says, Behold, God is my helper. Amen? He said, The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil upon uh, unto my enemies. Cut them off in thy truth. I will, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name. O Lord, there's the third time, Jehovah, sovereign one, self-sustaining God, overseer of everything, for it is good. For he hath delivered me out of all my trouble, and mine eye has seen his desire upon my enemies. Let's pray. Father, <coughs> we don't like to think of, again, uh, our own people at times can raise up and, and, and be enemies. They're, they're ultimately, again, un we understand they're, they're enemies of God. <coughs> and if we're for you, God, and if we're going to walk with you, God, then we're going to have oftentimes enemies, maybe in our, even in our own homes at times. Well, Father, because we all, and, and we might even ourselves, and have been uh, a person that uh, is not in, in the will of God and following God, and so, so we hinder other people. God help us with that, Lord. This is a difficult time in David's life, and, and God, we, we pray we would learn, as uh, our brothers already prayed, Father, we'd learn something about thee, Father, and about our lives and about what your desire is for us and how we're to respond in this wicked world and how we're to respond when even in odd times the, the enemy might be our own people. And, uh, Father, we just pray, God, you'd help us. We need your help tonight. We pray. Uh, boy, boy, we pray like David prayed here. God is my helper. You're our helper, Lord. And God help us, Lord, we pray. In Christ's name and for his sake. And all God's people said... Amen. Aren't you glad God's your helper? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Can you can you find any better help? Now, folks, listen, I go to different places, and you know what people keep telling me? They can't find any help. They can't find any help. You know, we live in a society that people don't want to work, people don't want to do anything, and, and people say, man, just can't find any help. And, and when you do find help, you can't find good help. You know, we went the other night to uh, this, uh, hadn't been to the mall in uh, ages, this Aspero Mall, went up there. And man, we was going to see this uh, uh, movie about this uh, group and um, uh, called Unsung Hero, and uh, it's about a musical group, but it's really about their mom and dad. And, and walked in there, and and uh, this is folks, this is uh, on a uh, what night was that? Friday night. Friday night, and there some some stores were closing at seven o'clock. <laughs> they had the doors down, ready. Hey, and the guy had it. Yeah, he, he. I guess he's letting the people know that we're inside there. That hey, we get ready to close. He only had the door halfway, and they're gonna they're gonna have to do the limbo to get out of there because he's ready to close. But hey, listen. Help. But you know, folks, listen, if you're a Christian, you're a born-again believer, you got help. Amen. There might not be other people that are around you, and, and you might have people that are even from your own tribe, like David, that will go against you and try to hinder you, but God is our help. Amen. And so in the first three verses, this is what David says. He says, save me, a word again, deliver me, O God. He says, by, how, by what? By thy name. He said, and judge me by thy strength. 
He says, God, I want you to save me. I want you to deliver me. I have the desire, God, that you do it. Because if you do it, it'll be doing it done in your strength and it'll be done the right way. Amen? And folks, listen, all of us are guilty of trying to deliver ourselves out of our situations. Now, I'll tell you again, I do not like what's going on in society today. I do not like, you know, and, and again, when we talk to this person today, you know, most people, listen, folks, it's, it's, it's just a given. Most people do not want to handle things biblically. They don't. They want to handle them things themselves and they want to do things without any accountability and all these other kind of things. I'm just telling you, folks, God is our deliverer. Amen. God wants to. And hey, remember what we talked about this morning? It's not only that he's able, but he's willing. Amen. He wants to deliver us. It may not. And obviously, oftentimes it's not in our time. It's not when we think, but we just got to trust God. And that's just, I, I, I mean, when I say that, it just doesn't sound right. You understand what I'm saying? We just got to trust God. That, that's a, I don't even know how good of a saying that is. It almost sounds like you can't trust God when I make a statement like that. That's just, man, God help us to trust God. He's trustworthy. Now, if you say you just got to trust Bobby, now that's a whole different ball game right there. Isn't it? You know, so for, sorry, Bobby. I was talking about me, Bobby. <laughs> You don't have it off to have Bobby's in the church with you. You gotta be careful with stuff like that. Bobby go home and say, Man, he's talking about me. You, can't, you trust me. <laughs> I was talking about me, Bobby. And uh, but I was talking about you too, Bobby. We're, we're all I might as well go ahead and say it, Bobby. I might as well get it out and be transparent. I was talking about you, I was talking about everybody else, Richie, you know, uh, Phil. Yeah, go ahead. Everybody else raise your hand too, because we're all again, we again trust God. It's God. He's our deliverer. And then David says this, and I love this. He says this, like I said, this is in a lot of his psalms, uh, more than half of them. He says, I think, um, uh, hear my prayer. Now, folks, listen again. This, the, 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 the Bible, again, is so rich, amen, with words and meaning. And dude, just, I read, I, I think it was, I was, I was sending out a, I actually sent out two nuggets today because I sent an early morning nugget and an evening nugget. I'm, I'm gonna be, uh, there's one way I might be able to be like Spurgeon. Maybe I'll write my book, Morning and Evening Nuggets. Man, that sounds good. That's got a ring to it. Barney said I need to write the book, Meditation on the Mower, and he'd write the foreword to it. And uh, maybe I'll have two books one day. And uh, But anyway, I'm not a writer, so I might have to get Sue to write it for me. And uh, I'll, she can, I'll tell her, and she'll, she'll write it down for me. And, uh, but he says, hear my prayer. It's a rich word again, folks. Listen, it's not just again, you know, when, when you have a problem and a difficulty, right? You, you obviously want that problem, that difficulty solved, right? So you don't just want God to, again, when I say listen to you, you do want him to listen, but you want him to do something about it, right? You want God to, to hear and heed. You know what you're asking for, right? And, and so here, here he says, he says, hear my prayer. It's personal to God. And you know, oftentimes people come to you and they ask you to pray for things, but they ain't even praying. That's not personal to somebody. If somebody asks you to pray for them on some issue or something, and they're not even praying on it, it's not worth your prayers. If they're not enough concerned about praying for it, why are they asking you to pray for it? I remember I told you about the lady years ago. She asked me, she said, she said, I want you to pray about it because I think you can get in touch with God more than I can. I'm like, what? I said, who am I? Something must be wrong in your life if you're thinking you can't get in touch with God, right? But somebody else can. All of us have, right? Can come to the throne boldly by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that a blessing for it's not for preachers and missionaries. There's not some kind of special thing that we can get to God more. Than, no, no. Everybody can have a relationship with God in the way God would happen to have. Amen. And David had a special relationship with God. He said, Hear my prayer, O God. He said, Give ear to the words of my mouth. Right? Trouble. Trouble everywhere. And he says this, he said, strangers, strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek, seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. He said, Selah, think about that. So here David, again, in his complaint, he's in a, 
he's in a difficult situation. And, um, he's not only got Saul chasing after him, but he's got people helping Saul chase after him, telling him where he is. Aren't you glad this is, folks? It don't matter what people do or what people try to do to hinder the work of God or what God has promised that he's going to do. He's going to come through. Amen? You say, well, the enemy's got, you know, and, and this is what was happening with David. And every time God brought him through. Turn with me in your Bibles to uh, uh, 1 Samuel uh, 23. Okay? 1 Samuel 23. <coughs> now we're going to go back to Psalm uh, 54 in a second. And uh, we're actually going to pick up both things that we want to pick up here in this particular uh, section of Scripture in 1 Samuel 23. Uh, you're going to see uh, uh, exactly what the Bible says the situation was for David in this psalm. It says in verse 14, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, And David abode in the wilderness and the strongholds, and remained in the mountain in the wilderness of Zeph. And Saul sought for him, how long? Every day, but God. Now that's good. That's not goat religion right there. <laughs> but God, but God delivered <clears throat> him not into his hand. Amen? Saul sought him every day, but God delivered David out of his hand every day. Amen? Verse number 15, And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Zeph in the wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David <coughs> into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee. And thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that also Saul, my father, knoweth. He said, And the two made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Keep that in mind, what I just read to you there, okay? Keep that in your mind, all right? He said, and then came, who? The Ziphites to Saul to Gibeah, and said, say, David, doeth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the wood in the hill of Hecali, which is in the south of Jessamine? Now, therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. So here's these folks. Again, ready to deliver David into Saul's hand. And Saul, listen folks, this is why I'm reading this to you. Okay? That's why I'm reading this to you. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for he hath had compassion on me. That's interesting, isn't it? Isn't it? You know what he's saying, right? He's saying, God, the Lord, sovereign one. It, it's, it's right there, Lord, sovereign. He has helped me find David so I can kill him. Are, are y'all listening to me tonight? This is wicked saw, wicked heart, and he's saying, the Lord, you know, people do this, by the way, right? Mm -hmm. You understand this is still the same heart of man today that will actually, again, give the Lord credit for their evil doings. Now, who is on the Lord's side here, David or Saul? David is. Now, you know David just prayed, and he's going to say how the Lord's going to help him. And, and here Saul is saying, I got him. I got him because the Lord led you, God. Now, these people are supposed to be, remember what he said about the, the Zephites? Remember what he said? He said the Zephims, they, they, they were not upholding God. They weren't walking with God, and neither is Saul. But they're, they're actually believing, again, that they are. 
Do you realize, folks, in our history, Christians have done a lot of things in their life that God wasn't in? Amen. In the name of God. Do you realize, folks, that that's exactly what Saul of Tarsus was doing? Before he got saved, Paul? He actually thought he was doing God a service by killing Christians? <clears throat> but do you realize that we, we, there's some embarrassing things in, in Christianity that have happened down through the years? By the way, there's people today that don't represent Christianity the way that they should to people in the world. Holding these signs up and all these things that they say about people and uh, rather than trying to reach them for Christ, God helps us, right? And so do you see that there? He says, Blessed be ye of the Lord. He said, Go, I pray you, prepare ye, and know and see his place where his hunt is, and who has he have seen him there, for it is told me that he dealeth very subtly. See therefore and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself, and come again to me with certainty, and I will go with you, and it shall come to pass, if he be in the land, that I will search him out through all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and they went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Moab, in the plain of the south of Jessamine. And Saul also and his men went to seek him. And they told David, wherefore he came down into the rock and abode in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul heard that he heard that, and he pursued after David in the wilderness of Moab. And Saul went on his side of the mountain, and David and his men went on the side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David, and his men were round about to take them. But, <laughs> aren't you glad? Aren't you glad the Lord's your help? Has God ever intervened in your life? Amen. 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 <laughs> and David's surrounded. It's over. Saul's got him. He's giving praise to the Lord that he's got finally going to get him. Finally going to kill him. <clears throat> but there came a messenger unto Saul saying, Haste thee and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that God can even use the Philistines for his glory? Amen. Amen. And save David. <laughs> Miracle, isn't it? Praise God for God's glory. He said, Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. Therefore they call that place Selah Amala Koth. Now, I didn't write this down. And, and David went up from thence and dwelt in the strongholds of Adam Gedi. Turn back to Psalm 54. I looked up the meaning of this word and I, I, I forgot to write it down. <laughs> what? Rock of division. Rock of division, right. God brought this and that's what, uh, you know, uh, Saul named it. And, uh, but anyway, David escapes again. But I read all that to you for this reason because that passage of scripture, of course, tells us is when this, this took place and then and we took a pause, but then in verse 4, we're going to see the comfort, verse 4 through 7, uh, David has, has laid his complaint before God, but now we're going to see David's comfort in God. He says this, he said, Behold, God is mine helper. <laughs> Amen. He understood that God has, is the only one that can deliver him from Saul's deadly hand. It doesn't mean that he didn't fear. The Bible tells us plainly there in 1 Samuel 23 that he had fear of Saul. Now let me ask you something. If somebody was going to try to kill you and was hunting you down every day, you think you might not have a little fear mm -hmm. to be around them folks? Right? And so again, it's, it's natural. It's natural to have that fear. But it's supernatural to trust God in the midst of that fear. Amen? We need God. He said, he said, he said God, we just read it to you. He said, behold, God is my helper. Now, I don't want to just move right past that, folks. Listen. I tell you today, the true Christian that walks with God in this world is in the minority. I mean, really, you don't see a lot of people following God and walking with God. They're, but the truth of the matter is they, they're really in the majority. That's, that's the truth. If you walk with God, you, you, you've already won. Amen. You, you have the victory every day right there because God is your helper. Amen. 
No, I just told you, your people are going to abandon you. You know, people will leave you behind. But God will not do this. Amen. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad that he'll never leave you or forsake you? He's made the promises to you that he'll be there, his presence. He'll, he, now, you may not sense his presence. You may not see his presence. You might be living in darkness at times. You're like, oh, God, hear me. And you may feel like he's not hearing you. You see, David, in these Psalms, folks, you'll always see, again, your thoughts affect your feelings. They do. It was, hey, Daryl, yeah. bring your beard out here for a minute. I just want to ask you a question. Is it okay if I tell them about your uh, experience with the uh, um, the hamburger? Oh, yeah. They never bought you before, but it's on there. Okay, all right. Uh, Daryl, Dar <laughs> well, I'm trying to get better at that. I had to do with my eyes. Be sure to tell everybody. Yeah, that do with the eyes. I don't see very okay. well in damn places. Well, it goes along with the message, okay? Yeah. So anyway, we... It, <laughs> Take it up with God. <laughs> yeah, Daryl went through the line. And uh, he, you know, I, I had said that he asked me what we were having, and I told him, I said, we're having hamburgers and hot dogs and french fries, okay? And I forgot about the, the cowboy beans. And, and, uh, and, and, and Margaret, I, I, don't, I don't think, I think she might have mentioned to me that she was going to have some brisket, I, I, but I forgot it. And uh, then uh, uh, um, Daryl was talking to Randy, and he said, the only thing Randy said he cooked was the bacon, Okay. <laughs> You have to talk with him about that? I told him I cooked the bacon anyway. You told you cooked the bacon? Brown the hamburger. Okay, you got it. All right, yeah. Anyway, he said you, just the bacon, all right? And uh, so take out that with him. And uh, But anyway, um, so Daryl's going through the line, and, you know, he he he, he got him a burger, and, and uh, he went on through, and then he went and he got uh, what he thought was bacon, but he couldn't see with his eyes. It was brisket. And he and he put that on his on his on his burger there, and he and he went back to sit down, and and he started he started eating that burger, and he's like, man, he said Randy didn't cook that bacon, man. He said this thing this thing don't taste right. That that that, that bacon just not right, you know. But it was it was brisket, and he found out. He's and somebody I can't remember who he told him. He said we had some brisket. He said oh that's brisket, man. That's not bacon. And uh, but listen, listen to me. He thought. He thought, folks. Now, folks, let me ask you a question. Now, you can't tell me that brisket wasn't good now. That brisket was for a long time, buddy. I ate several pieces of that brisket. Right? And, and, and let me say it was delicious. I know, Daryl, I'm going to get that. Fact, we don't yeah. need you. Take yeah. that beer back in there. Say okay. wrong with it. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen. He, yeah, I was going to explain that to you. But his thought about it being bacon and it not being done affected his whole beat when he ate it. He thought, man, this is not, but it was good. It's like he said, it was delicious once he knew again, right? And folks, this is the way it is with God. We get these thoughts and these feelings and all these things, it affects our feelings and we start going away from God and we start thinking the wrong things and all this stuff and and, and we view God in the wrong sense. You need to think right about God. Not because, it, hey, God is God. Amen. That's why you need to think right about God. Amen. Amen. And so listen, praise God that God is your helper. Amen. Even though it seems like he's not helping you. Amen. Seems like it seems like this is nasty bacon, but it's really delicious brisket. Right? Although your circumstances and things might be going on in your life and they're, they're not good, but God says that those that love God, He'll work out for good. Amen? Right? And not even you know all the scriptures. But I want you to see this. This is, this is so good. He says, Behold, God is my helper. He said, The Lord, Jehovah, is with them that uphold my soul. Now, folks, you wouldn't know this if God wouldn't have told us that this is where this passage of Scripture was from. But you know who I believe he's speaking about? I believe he's speaking about John. I really do. I can't say that for sure. But he does say here, he said, the Lord is with them that uphold my soul. Did you hear what Jonathan 
said to him. Jonathan went, and you know who Jonathan is, right? Jonathan is the king's son. He's the next in line for being king. And yet God has spoken. God has spoken that David's going to be king. And Dave, Jonathan, David's out there in the woods running from his dad, Saul, uh, uh, Jonathan's dad. And Jonathan goes out there and encourages in what? In God. Amen. In God. Now, folks, listen to me. I'll tell you what we need to be doing. We need to be encouraging people in God. Amen? Why? These Zephites, listen, they're supposed to be upholding God, but they're not upholding God. They're going their own way. Saul should have recognized. He should have repented. He should have said, David's going to be king. God has taken it from me, and I need to go, and I need to just let David be the king. But he didn't do that. He wanted to do it his own way. And by the way, you can find plenty of people out there who want to do it their own way too, and they'll gather with you. Right? For a cause. Even if they don't like each other. Did we not see that with Pilate and Herod? These people hated each other, these two. But yet again, when it come to get rid of Christ, they're going to have a sign of pact to get rid of him. And folks, that's the way the world is. And you see, but Jonathan, man, he's a, I tell you who Jonathan is, a true Barnabas. Man, I tell you folks, we need some Barnabas is in our lives, but I'm going to tell you more so what we need to be as Barnabas is ourselves. You may not have a Barnabas in your life, but you know what? You ought to be a Barnabas. Amen? You ought to be a Jonathan. I tell you, I preached several messages on Jonathan and David and their friendship. I believe it's a great friendship in the Bible. I really do. I, 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 other than, you know, Jesus calling us friends. I believe it's a true picture of what God wants a friendship to be all about. David said, he said, those uh, that uh, the Lord is with them that uphold my soul. Amen. He's talking about his inner being. And folks, you realize, folks, what they need. Now, it's okay, folks. Listen, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with helping people physically. Nothing wrong with that. But what people need is nourishment for their soul. They need encouragement from the Lord, amen. But if you got nothing from the Lord, how are you going to give something from, uh, from the Lord? Right? Think about this. Amen? It's going to be encouragement with people. I mean, a true encouragement. You want to encourage them in the Lord, amen, that God is good. Now, folks, listen. Now, you all have been in a place where you didn't feel like God is good. I mean, Right? Things are difficult at times. We, 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 we sometimes we get a, a harsh feeling towards God that He's harsh. And you no, know, God is good. Amen. Jonathan told David, he said, You remember, I just read it to you. He said, You're going to be king. He said, I know my dad's after you. He said, But God's going to protect you. Amen. And you know what Jonathan said? I'm going to be a part of that. Amen. I'm going to do, do whatever I can to protect you too because God wants you to protect you. Because you're going to be king. Amen. And the Lord watches over people like that. Amen. Don't worry about what the world says they're going to do to you and all these other kind of things. Boy, I tell you, be concerned about, hey, what God can do to you. You don't walk with him. David said, behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with him that uphold my soul. He shall, amen, reward evil unto mine enemies and cut them off in thy truth, he says. You see, and he did that over and over and over as Saul continued to hunt him down and tried to uh, take his life. God continually uh, 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 gave his enemies what they deserved for not following God themselves. He left the revenge in God's hands. You know that about David. Two times he could have killed Saul easily and taken his life, but he didn't do it. He didn't do it because he knew it wouldn't be right. And remember what I said to you at the beginning of the message? It doesn't matter how wrong people do you, you still must do right. You still must choose God and know that God wants you to do the right thing. But they don't want you to know this. Boy, folks, this is it's so true. You see, God can miraculously change your thoughts and your feelings when you put yourself and know that God's your helper. Amen. Notice what he says there. Again, a choice. A choice. You don't have to be the way that you are. I've worked in a nursing home for many years, and I've told you this before. There's two types of people in the nursing homes. There's happy people and grumpy people. It's just are. Now, listen, folks, folks, God doesn't want you to be 
grumpy. He wants you to be, he wants you to have joy. Now, folks, listen, it's not to belittle people's pain, but I'm just telling you, God, help us. I've seen people in tremendous pain in, in their lives, and yet they have tremendous joy in their hearts. God wants and desires us to, again, to, 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 to enjoy Him, whether it's in young age or old age. He does. He desires that. And so David says this. He said, I will freely, don't you like that word? I will freely sacrifice unto thee. <laughs> now, I've said this to you. I've been here close to 20 years, right? Man, it's coming up on 20 years. Amazing, isn't it? I told you this when I first got here. I do not like begging people to do stuff. Right? You like begging people to do stuff? Don't you want people to, you know, it's, it's like taking up these offerings. Man, don't give if you don't want to give. God's going to provide. Can I go ahead and tell you something? Let me go ahead and get it down where it needs to be. He's going to provide with you or without you. You see, man, I've had people come and go in this church that thought, hey, you remember when we first, hey, you remember Randy. Man, that, that, that general fund got down to minus down to zero. We had some other money in the bank. But, but you know, we, there was rumors going around when people left this church that uh, this church is going to go down. And that had been about 18, uh, 17, 18 years ago. They said, hey, have you heard the rumor? Faith Baptist Church is going under. <laughs> Y'all might not have heard that rumor. But it did get back to me. Now what did God do? Well, God sustained us. It didn't have nothing to do with us. Had everything. God didn't need those folks' money. And he still don't need it. And he don't need yours. He don't need mine. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns everything. The hills too. He owns everything. And if you don't want to give to God, don't give to God. That's up to you. Now, yeah, that's, that's hard preaching there, but it's got to be done. Because we get proud of ourselves. Oh, they, they couldn't survive without me. You know, my money. No, 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 no. God don't need your money. I like what Pastor Baker used to say to us. He said, people come and they say, all the church, they talk to all the church, well, all they want is money. He said, I'll tell you what, come to church and we'll give you some money. I like that. Amen. You know what that does? That squelches somebody's excuse right there. How much you need. Right? <coughs> Amen. David said, I'll freely sacrifice unto thee. Ain't nobody forcing his hand. He's choosing to sacrifice before God. Boy, oh boy. Now, at this particular time in David's life, I don't know if he knew he'd going to be out there in that wilderness running for his life for 10 years. <laughs> There's so many things, man, in life that you read and that sticks with you. Man, I'm telling you, folks, this has been at least 30, 40 years ago. Start, really, almost starting out on the first journey with God. I remember this dear lady. She had one of those children that they that told her that uh, probably, uh, you know, wouldn't live until they're probably 30, 35 years old, had some kind of disease, and she was going to have to feed that, 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 that boy every single day of her life, every meal. And it really got to her. In her being, she thought, can I do this for 35 years? And somebody helped her. Said, you ain't got to do it for 35 years. You just got to do it today. The boy ended up living, I think, to close to 40 years old. She did it all the way up to that point. But you know how she did it? She did it one day at a time. Amen, isn't that good? Amen. Listen, you don't know how long it's going to last. David didn't know how long it's last. But you know what he said? He said, I'm going to freely sacrifice unto thee. Amen. This is what we got to say, folks. It, now, really, we got to ask ourselves, is God worth it? I'm going to tell you what. Yes, 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 a thousand times over. He's worth it. But we often don't feel like that. But David said, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. And then notice what he says. He said, he said unto thee, and I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. Amen. And it's good for God's people to praise him even though somebody's chasing after you, trying to kill you. Even though your own tribe people will give up on you and try to help the enemy destroy you. It's good for you to praise God and freely sacrifice to him anyway. You know why? Because he's Lord. He's Lord. 
I like what old preacher Bobby used to say. He said, has it ever occurred to you that nothing's ever occurred to God? That's a good statement right there, isn't it? That's a great nugget. He used to say to us in the, in the congregation, he'd say, he said, God's not in heaven taking a tranquilizer. <laughs> now, can you, can you imagine a God that's worried? Hello? That a God that couldn't do everything. <laughs> Are you serious? Listen, God is in control. He's worthy of your sacrifice. He's worthy of your praise. Amen? We need to praise Him. Notice verse 7 as He closes. The triumphant comfort. For He hath delivered me out of most of my troubles. <laughs> no. No, He delivers you out of all of them. Right? He hath delivered me out of my trouble, and mine eye hath seen. Now listen, folks. Don't, don't miss this. His desire upon mine enemies. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, Pastor, wait a minute. I have certain desires I want to see God do. No, it don't matter what you want to see God do. You need to want what God wants to do. Amen? Well, I thought God would do this. I didn't think he'd deliver my enemies. <laughs> I didn't think he'd save them. I want to still be mad at them. <laughs> I'll never forget. We went to see, oh, uh, oh my goodness, what that guy's name. You don't have a clue. Neither do I. <laughs> um, 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 what is that singer's name? Mm. Anyway, I really like that guy. I hadn't listened to him. Some years, but I really liked him. Anyway, he was old, drunk, and just all kinds of family constantly, you know, pray for him to get saved and trust Christ and um, all these different things. And he's an old Indian, Cherokee Indian, and um, begged him, begged him to get saved. He said he, he said he had literally died twice on the table. And uh, anyway, God miraculously saved that man. And you know what, his family. He went, he went great guns for God and uh, for the Lord. And his family's like, well, you don't have to overdo it. <laughs> what? <clears throat> Here are these people. <laughs> the man went from being a drunk, mean-spirited abuser, and God saved him. And he's going great guns for God. And his family's like, well, you don't have to go overdo it. <laughs> what? I mean, this is how we are, though. This is how we are. You know, we, we say we want something, and God does it. You know, and it ain't the way we wanted him to do it. We want him to kill him. You know? Ah, just, if he's not going to do right, God, just kill him. <laughs> what? God help us, right? David said, he's delivered me personally out of all of my trouble. He said, and mine eye has seen his desire upon my enemies. Let God be the revenger. Let God take the vengeance. Let God do what God can do. And you just keep God as your help in every situation you're in. No matter what comes your way, God hears your prayer. God will answer it in His way. Amen? Take comfort in that. Hey, listen, I'm not telling you not to take your complaints to God. He wants to hear them. Okay? But you know what he wants to do? He wants to comfort you in your complaint and let you know that he's your help. Amen. Aren't you glad? What a great song, right? Amen. In the midst of all that, a Jonathan. A Jonathan to come alongside. Come alongside somebody. Right? I really want you to pray for me. I, I want to, I, I asked little William when he went out, I said, hey, did I have people come over there and eat lunch at your place? I said, where are you going to school? He said, in Bondi. I want to go, I want to go eat lunch with William. He's like, eat lunch with me? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to come over there and stir up some trouble, man. <laughs> but anyway, be a, be a comfort to somebody. Be a comfort to somebody. Reach out to somebody. Right? Amen? God's called us all, folks. He ain't just called me. He ain't just called the deacons. He ain't just called, he's called everybody. Reach out to somebody. Be a blessing to them. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Don't be like, oh, anyway. 
Uh, never mind. Let's stand on our feet and have a word of prayer before I say something I want to say. Right? Amen. So you already have. I was going to talk to you about it after the service. Amen. Good. Let's get it all out in the open. Father, we're grateful for who you are. Thank you for this song. What a blessing it is to my heart. Lord, to know that you're my helper. And Father, whatever comes, whatever comes our way, Father, we can trust you in the midst of the storm. And Father, we just ask you to be with your people, Father. We want to have a great desire for your people, Father, for who you've called me to be the pastor uh, of these uh, folks that are here. And we just ask, Lord, you'd help us, God. We need your help. Encourage us, Father, even when it's uh, some of our own uh, tribe that uh, go against us, Lord, that we would trust you, God, to take care of them and take care of us. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And bless you. Have a great week. And Lord willing, see you Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you.